This is the Chapter 5 test review for Math 7. Your test is tomorrow. Make sure before you watch this video that you have fully completed to the best of your ability this review packet and you are using this as a tool to check your work. So right now you should have a pen out, you should be looking at a completed review packet and be correcting what you need to correct along the way and giving yourself a star for the things you did correct. All right, so number one and two, we're writing the ratios as a fraction in simplest form. So this is just, oh, what I do already? This is 48 worksheets, and yes, you can abbreviate as long as I know what it means, to 12 students, okay? And to simplify that, I gotta think of what's the biggest number that goes evenly in both of those, and the biggest number is 12. Okay, so this turns into four worksheets per one student. That is the answer to number one. Number two, 35 frogs to 21 lizards. And the biggest number that goes evenly into both of those is seven. And that gives me five frogs over three lizards. Okay, that's how you do number one and two. Three and four is finding the unit rate, okay? A um, couple different ways you can do this. Or, yeah, what am I talking about? Let's go back up. Finding the unit rate. So we have 240 kilometers over in two and a half hours, okay? And to find the unit rate, you have to divide by the denominator. So if I divide both sides by the denominator, um, I'm divided by 2.5 and I get 96 kilometers per one hour. Okay, when you're finding the unit rate, you want the denominator to be one. Number four, $15 for four quarts. Need to divide by the denominator to find the unit rate, which gives me $3.75 per one quart. Five and six, tell whether the ratios form a proportion. Two different ways you can do this. You can simplify the two fractions and see if they're equal once you simplify them, or you can use cross proportions. Okay, on number one or five, I'm going to do cross proportion or cross products. Sorry, because the numbers are so big. So 56 times 10 is 560. 20 times 24 is 480. And since these are not equal to each other, no, they do not form a proportion. Yes, you do need to write this full answer on your test. Um, number six, these numbers are small enough to where I can simplify them. So if I divide the second fraction by three, I get five-eighths is equal to five-eighths. And since these are equal to each other, yes, they do form a proportion. On seven and eight, this problem looks a little funky. You will not see something like this on um, your test exactly like this. Um, so don't get too freaked out if you're not familiar with this format. Basically, this was, remember when we did this y over x table? So that y over x is 1 over 5. This one's 3 over 10. This is 5 over 15. And 7 over 20. You needed to simplify all three of, four of these and see if you get the same simplified version. Well, 1 fifth is already simplified. 3 tenths is already simplified. 5 over 15 can be 1 third. And 7 over 20 is already simplified. So no, x and y are not proportional. If they were proportional, proportional all of the simplified versions would be equal to each other. Propor, can't spell. Same thing on number 8. You need to put y over x on all four of these values. So this is 5 over 2. This is 7.5 over 3, this is 10 over 4, and 12.5 over 5. Okay, and these I just put in the calculator. I put 5 divided by 2, and I got 2.5. 7 and a half divided by 3, I got 2.5. Same thing here, and same thing here. Okay, so if these all four of these simplified versions are the same number, you can say yes, x and y are proportional. All right, let's look at the next problem. Number nine says the table shows different rates to ship books through the mail. Are the rates proportional? So for four pounds, it costs 355. 
For six pounds, it costs four thirty-three, and for eight pounds, it costs five eleven. Okay, so you just need to set up all three of these. So four pounds is three fifty-five. Is that proportional to six pounds? Four four thirty-three, and eight pounds five eleven. Okay, so we're just gonna do some cross products here. So six times three fifty-five and four times 433, so we have 17.32 and 21.3. So right away, we know that those proportions are not equal, but we do need to check all of them just to make sure. So I'm gonna do these two, and I have 34.64 is not equal to 30.66. So you would say this is not proportional. If they were proportional, all of these values right here would be the same. All right, number 10, a lot of you probably did, oh my, that's a different thing. A lot of you probably did more work than you had to do. All you have to do is write the proportion. Okay, so 17 hours over S songs is equal to 68 hours over 1,000 songs. That's it. Okay, same thing over here, six fish per 10 gallons is equal to F fish per 55 gallons. All you had to do was write the proportion, you did not have to solve it. Number 12, you can buy five pounds of grapes for 9.95, okay, and it's asking you write a proportion that gives you the cost, C, when you buy four pounds of grapes. Okay, this is what I mean by write a proportion, set two ratios equal to each other and solve. So when you solve this, you use cross proportions and I get 5C is equal to 3980. And if you divide both sides by five, you get C is equal to $7.96. 13, 14, and 15, these are pretty simple. You use your cross products. So this is 7W is equal to 420, divide both sides by seven, and W is equal to 60. Same thing here, for those of you who like to do these in your head, be prepared for decimals where you can't do them in your head. Okay, so this is 1.8A equals 41.4, divide by 1.8, divide by 1.8, and you get A is equal to 23. And 15, 8D is equal to 75, divide by 8, divide by 8, and D is equal to 9.375. Okay, those should be pretty straightforward. Same thing with 16, 17, and 18. We get a little bit more challenging on 17 and 18, but 16 is the same thing. So you have 1.3T is equal to 7.8 divide by 1.3, divide by 1.3, and t is equal to 6. Number 7, okay, 8 times 7 is still 56, okay, but 3x times 21 is 63x, okay, then you divide both sides by 63, and you get x is equal to 0 0.88888, which you would just write as 0 0.8 repeating. 18 is where you have to do the distributive property. So this is 10 and plus twos is equal to 80. If we distribute, this should be 10. That's not a 10. My eraser. Um, give my pen back. This is 10 and plus 20 is equal to 80. Subtract 20 from both sides. You get 10n is equal to 60, divide both sides by 10, and n is equal to 6. 19 and 20, we have to graph the line that passes through the points and then find the slope. So negative 4, negative 3 is negative 4. Negative 3 would be right about there. Keep in mind it's between negative 2 and negative 4. And then 4, 3 is here. Okay, so I'm rising a half, and then 1 and a half, 2 and a half, 3. And then running one, two, three, four. Okay, so my slope here, really we're counting by two, so it's six over eight instead of three over four. 
but then I simplify it and your slope ends up being three-fourths. Have to draw my line. All right, next points you have to graph are two, one, which is right here in six, three. Okay, we rise one, two, we run one, two, three, four. So my slope is rise over run. So I rose two and I ran four, which simplifies to one half. Um, 21, this one's a little tricky. I need to get y by itself, so subtract 5x subtract 5x. I have negative 3y equals, don't really have to write 0, so negative 3y is equal to negative 5x. Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3 to get y by itself. And I have y equals a negative divided by negative is a positive, so y equals 5 thirds x. Now this shows direct variation because this is k times x, okay? And I'm not going to write out the full explanation because I'm running out of time. I can only have a 15 minute video, okay? This one, 22, is probably the trickiest problem on the whole test. The first thing you have to do is multiply by 9, both sides, okay, to get 9 out of there. So then I have 9x is equal to y minus 2. Once you have that, it should be pretty easy. Get y by itself to add 2 to both sides. y is equal to 9x plus 2. And this is no direct variation because there has that plus 2 on the end. If it was just 9x, it would be good, but the plus 2 makes it not show direct variation. 23, also kind of complicated, but we can do it, I promise. Um, so we're trying to get to seven cups of batter. So for every three-fourths cup of milk, I have one cup of flour. Okay, so right away I have one and three-fourths cup of batter. Okay, if I mix those two together. We did a problem very similar to this with red and green paint. Okay, so let's just double this. Let's see what happens. So if I have a, a cup and a half of milk, and two flours. Now I have three and a half cups of batter. Okay, and I know I need to get to seven. So if I have three and a half and I need to get seven, all I gotta do is multiply it one more time by two. So I have three cups of milk and four cups of flour. Gives me seven cups of batter. Okay, so there's your answer. Three cups of milk and four cups of flour. 24, you earn $102 for doing 12 hours of work. So this is you. Your friend, R-I, why is this being weird? Holy moly. Your friend earns $120 for 15 hours of work. And you're trying to figure out how much each of you earn per hour. So if I take, find the unit rate and divide both sides by 12, I earn $8.50 an hour, and my friend, if I divide by 15, only earns $8 an hour. So who earns more? I do. Last question. We're almost there. What would you earn if you did 15 hours of work? So you do $8.50 times 15 hours, and you get $127.50. And that's it. I made it within the 15 minutes, which is awesome. If you have any additional questions, please, please, please send me an email tonight, and we'll get back to you as soon as I can. Good luck.